Uh, greetings, Matt fans. All right, so this is worksheet five, and uh, we're going to actually uh, talk about proportions today. Okay, so you might have heard of proportion. Um, if some, something is proportional, it's kind of like, like almost like even. You kind of even things out a little bit. Okay, so we'll kind of talk a little bit about what this means. But first of all, um, we're going to do the left hand side of this uh, as notes, and then you're going to do the right hand side for homework. Um, as I've done in the past uh, worksheets, I'm also going to do the right hand side for you, but you should be doing the right hand side by yourself to practice, okay? Um, because it doesn't really make sense if you're not even practicing, because then we go take the quiz and test, you really won't know what you're doing. So anyway, I'll do the left hand side, explain everything, and then I'll do the right hand side, but hopefully you will have the right hand side done by the time you uh, watch me do the right hand side. Okay, anyway. So and notice it was, I always make a big deal out of this, right? Five out of 43 questions, okay? So make sure you are uh, paying attention. All right, so first of all, if I ask you guys to write a percentage as a fraction, it's really easy. Guys, remember when I did is over of equals percent over 100? That's what you're gonna do with a percent. It's percent over 100. So literally, it's 30, 30 over 100. It's all I'm asking you guys to do. That is how you write a percentage as a fraction. Hmm, you think you might see this again? Yeah, you will. You'll see it a lot, okay? So that's all I do. I ask you to just write a percentage as a fraction. So 5%, that's 5 over 100. Pretty easy. Always over 100. Is over of equals percent over 100, okay? Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to work these proportions. Um, so Amy passes 80% of all her math tests. So first of all, you got to write that as a, as a proportion or as a ratio, we should say. So you're going to write 80 over 100. You always take the percent and you always put it over 100. Always, 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 okay? Um, she takes 40 math tests during the year. So Amy passes 80% of her tests, which is not very good. She should be passing more than that. Um, and she takes 40 math tests per year. How many tests is she able to pass? So um, if she passes 80, think of it this way. 80% means she passes 80 tests out of 100. So think of it, she passes 80 out of 100 total. So now if I want to put that 40, one of them is going to be a variable and one's going to be the 40. So think about it. I'm telling you, she takes 40 tests during the year. So that's the total that she takes. And I want to know how many is she going to pass, which that's what the question asks for, how many is going to pass. So notice it's the same thing on top. 80%, 80 pass out of 100 total, it's X pass out of 40 test total. You got to set up a proportion correctly, okay? So now if I cross multiply, I get 100X equals 80 times 40, which is 3,200. And I divide both sides by 100, I get X equals 32. So thinking logically, if I told you Amy's gonna pass 80% of her tests and she's taking 40 of them, so how many is she gonna pass? Well, she's gonna pass 32. Let's just say you set this up wrong. If you actually did 40 over X equals 80 over 100. Now you should never mess up the percentage. It's always 80 over 100. But let's just say you did this instead. So you got 80 X equals 4,000. And then you divide by 80. X would come out to be 50. So that doesn't even make sense. If it says Amy passed 80% of her math test, if she took 40 tests, how many is she expected to pass? Well, if you take 40, how are you going to pass 50? It doesn't even make sense. It's impossible. You're either going to pass 40 or you're going to pass less because you're only taking 40. Okay, so my point is if you set it up wrong, you'll know because you'll have a number bigger than what you start out with. Okay, but if you set it up right the first time, you won't even have to worry about that. Okay, it's all about proportions though. Okay, so let's do number seven. Ah, McDonald's, good old McDonald's. McDonald's fries are four for $10. So you're gonna write this as four per $10. So that's gonna be fries, I'm just gonna, I'm writing the units. Fries on top and dollars on the bottom. It says how much are three fries? So remember, you gotta set up a proportion here, guys. So remember, the three is going to go on top because I'm telling you three fries, and this was four fries here. So three's on top, and on the bottom, I'm asking you how much is it. That's the dollar amount. That's what the X goes. Okay? 
So if I cross multiply, I get 4x equals 30. Divide both sides by 4. And again, put in your calculator, but you get 7.50. That means it's in money, so it's $7.50 for three fries. Now again, doesn't that make sense? If four fries are 10 bucks, shouldn't three fries be less? Once again, if you set it up wrong, let's just say I did it this way, four over 10, and let's say I set up as x over three. You would get uh, 10x equals 12, and then you divide both sides by, oops, both sides by 10, you get x equals, that would be one point, is that right, 1.2. Okay, now granted it's less, it should be less because three fries are less, but think logically, guys. Four fries for $10, and how much are three fries? A buck 20? Hmm, does not sound right, okay? So it's gotta be obviously something higher than a buck 20, because four for $10 means 250 each, so it certainly can't be a buck 20 for three of them, unless McDonald's is having a big sale, which they could be. Okay, but anyway, so I'm just saying, don't set up wrong, but just keep the same units. On top, fries, and then the bottom is money. Okay? All right. Next problem, number nine. A hundred students take a survey. Eighty students say they love math. So it's 80 over 100 um, because it's, they, this is love, I'm going to draw a heart, love math. And this is uh, surveyed. Okay, and then you got to put it on the other side. It's a proportion. So there are, if there are 2,500 students, how many should like math? Well, I'm now saying there's 2,500 kids. So that goes in the bottom because that's how many are surveyed. And I want to know, it asks you, how many total students love math? So that goes on top. So if I cross multiply, I get 100x is equal to 200,000. Divide by 100. So X is equal to uh, 2,000. Okay, so that's how many students should like math, which I think it should be more than that, but so 2,000 students like math. Okay, once again, if you set it up wrong, you'd get some kind of crazy number, but I wanna point something out here really quickly, math fans. Um, some of you say, Mr. Curtis, how do you know to put the 80 on top and the 100 on the bottom. What, what happens if I put the 100 on top and the 80 on the bottom? Well, usually you, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's just really quickly, I'm gonna set up just on the left-hand side here. Let's say I would have done 100 over 80. Okay, so on top would be the number of surveyed and the bottom is how many people love math. So you're also gonna put that 2,500 on the top and then the X is the number of students that like math on the bottom. Now notice math fans, if I cross multiply, I get the exact same thing. I get 100 X equals 80 times 2,500, which is 200,000. I get the exact same answer. So as long as you're consistent and you put the same units um, on the top and the bottom for both sides, you can't make a mistake, okay? All right, so let's keep going here. Uh, number 11, four inches represents 100 miles. So I'm gonna say four inches is 100 miles. Now, I don't usually put the units, units in there, but just to keep track of things. Now it says how far it is five inches, so put the same units on top. Well, how many miles? So X miles. Okay, same units on top and the bottom. So I cross multiply, you get four X equals 500 divided by four, so X comes out to be 125. So four inches is 100 miles. Well, five inches isn't supposed to be more. Sure is, it's 125 miles. And that's your answer. Okay, so let's do the right-hand side now. And I'll do it kind of quickly. Um, so 85% is just 85 over 100. Pretty easy, 2% is two out of 100. That's super easy. All right, Jennifer dunks a basketball 20% of all tries. So as soon as I see that 20%, 20 over 100. Okay, if she attempts 50 dunks, how many 
is she expected to make? So remember that she's trying 50 times and I want to know how many is she going to make because she makes uh, 20%. So 20 out of 100, that's 20%. So make sure you set up correctly. Otherwise, your units are, or your answer is going to be wrong. So we get 100 crossing cross multiply 100x equals 1000 divided by 100. So x equals 10. So that's how many dunks she's expected to make. Okay. Kane's chicken. Notice it's next to the McDonald's one too. Ooh, very excited. Kane's chicken is eight pieces for six dollars. So it's eight pieces for six bucks. So this is pieces on top, and this is dollars on the bottom. How much are twelve pieces? So put twelve on top and x on the bottom because it's a dollar amount. Okay, it's easy. So eight x equals seventy two divided by eight x equals 9. So 12 pieces is $9. Okay. All right. Number 10, 200 students take a survey. Um, 30 students eat lunch third period. So that means out of 200, so 30 eat lunch third period. So eat third out of 200. And now I'm going to say, hey, there are 2,500 students. So make sure you put that in the bottom. Because now I want to know how many students eat lunch out of 2,500. Okay, so cross multiply. So 200x is equal to 75,000 divided by 200. So x equals 375. There we go. Okay, so that's how many students eat lunch third period. Okay, and then our last problem, three inches represents 18 miles. How far does seven inches represent? So make sure you put the same units on there and put an X in the bottom, cross multiply. So three X equals 126. You can put that in your calculator, divide both sides by three. X is equal to 42 miles. Again, it makes sense if three inches is 18 miles, well, isn't seven more than double the number of inches? So more than double 18 is going to be, double 18 is 36, so it's got to be a little bit more. So that's why you get um, 42 miles. Okay, so that's it for worksheet five. Um, worksheet six is actually just uh, another day of the same material. So um, you guys should just try all of worksheet six and then uh, check it with my video, but I will do all the problems with worksheet six uh, uh, in the video, okay? That's it, my fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.